Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the continue statement. I'm going to go and open up my website here, javacjava.com, click on the begin button, We'll scroll down here to the continue statement. Click on that. And the continue statement can only be used inside of the following looping control flow statements. For, while, and do while. There are two types of continue statements. Unlabeled and labeled. The unlabeled continue statement skips the current iteration for the looping block it is located inside of. Right? So if we highlight this and pretend like it isn't here, then basically We've got our ordinary for loop where you know statements are executed here. Now, if we put a condition in here and we call continue, and this condition equals true, and then it goes ahead and executes the continue statement, then the rest of the statements are not executed if the continue statement is called. It's like it skips that particular iteration, comes right back up here like, like it never even happened. <clears throat> So now, what can we do if we have nested loops and we want a conditional test inside of an inner loop to skip the current iteration in the outer loop as well? Well, we can use the labeled continue statement. The first step for a labeled continue statement is to make a label followed by a colon. The label must be located directly before the block of code that it is labeling. When the continue statement is called, it must have the label name after the keyword continue, but before the semicolon. The rest of the statements in the inner loop and the outer loop will be skipped. The next iteration of the outer loop will be executed. Best way to do that is really look at the code, but I'll describe this here a little bit. If we just pretend this highlighted code isn't here, you'd have your normal for loop and with a nested for inside of it, right? And these statements would go ahead and execute. Now, when we stick the conditional statement in there, once this is true and we execute the continue label, it will say, okay, Here's my label up here, and the label is before this for statement, and so that label applies to this block of code right here that iterates for this for statement. So basically, statements are not executed on in the inner for, right? As a matter of fact, if there was iterations left on here, it would just go ahead and break completely out of those, right? And statements are not executed if the label continue statement is called here on the outer loop as well. Calling this on the inner loop to the outer loop's label, basically like none of this ever happened for that whole loop based up here. So um, this tutorial uses code and descriptions that are very similar to my break statement tutorial. I highly recommend watching that tutorial as well. So let's go ahead and do some code here real quick. Let's scroll down here, highlight this. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Let's move our browser off screen. Let's go to start, search, type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start, run, type in CMD. And that'll open up the DOS prompt there. Type in uh, Java C. You should see a bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't, if you see some funky error message, go ahead and uh, look at my tutorial for installing the Java development kit. You're gonna wanna make sure you get that um, installed and configured properly for these tutorials to work. Type in CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash, cd is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. Then we're going to do a make directory, md, java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Then we'll change directories to the java folder. And we're going to make a directory and we'll call this uh, continue statement. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and change to that folder and then we'll do notepad continue statement.java. Okay, let's go ahead and hit control V to paste or right click and select paste. And here is our class. Let's go ahead and save this. So inside of the main method entry point here, I'm just doing a simple string array here. String array, duck, 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 goose, duck, 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 duck. So we got four ducks and then a goose right in the middle followed by four more ducks in the string array. <coughs> And then we're just going to use a looping statement here to loop through this array, right? Checking for the string length. We've got the, um, the temporary variable i initialized to zero, and as long as it's less than length, it'll keep iterating through this, okay? Now, if the um, 
if the element at index i right equals goose, then we're just going to go ahead and hit continue because that'll just cause it to iterate through. So this line right here, where we're printing out the value of the in element at this particular index plus a space, we'll go ahead and print. So we don't want any any um, any geese in our print out here. So if it equals a goose, don't print it. And at the very end, it'll say only ducks here, no geese. And so um, let's go ahead and the next thing we're gonna do is build a number ladder of odd numbers. All right, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and compile this and show you what that looks like. In case you haven't watched my break tutorial, you're probably wondering what's a number ladder. So I'm just gonna give you an example of that. <coughs> Strip off that duck class here. Okay, so here we got our duck, 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 eight ducks, and the only ducks here, no geese. So our continue statement worked exactly like we expected. We didn't want that goose to, to display to the console, and it didn't. So here's our number ladder, right? You can see that, that's what that is. And we only want to display odd numbers this time around instead of every number like I did in the, um, <clears throat> the break statement tutorial there. So we can set, of course, and I use basically almost the exact same code. I even did some, some breaks in here. Yeah, it looks like I need to indent these better on my website. Make a little note uh, to do that here after this is done. But anyway, so basically it's, it's very, very similar, only I've got my label up here, right? And that's labeling the outer for loop, which is this one here, right? And then I've got an inner label right here, which is labeling the inner for loop. So the first thing that we do is we check to see, um, you know, X is basically going up here and the iteration portion of it, or the termination portion of it, sorry, is just set to true. So this would basically loop forever if we didn't break out of it using this break statement here. So if X is greater than the max number, which I just set as 11, and we'll change that and play around with this here. Then it'll go ahead and break to my label. When my label is gets the break there, right? It actually execution continues down here after outside of the code block. Just a quick review of the break statement there. So now the first thing we're gonna want to do is the X's, right? X's are basically controlling our rows on this here, right? This is a row, this is a row, this is a row, this is a row, this is a row. This is a row. So <clears throat> If x mod 2 and you, or remainder, right? But uh, basically this says, okay, if we take the value of x and we divide it by 2 and the result is even, then we're going to go ahead and skip this one, right? And that's, that's what this modulus does, is takes the remainder. So an even number will be evenly divisible by 2. 4 divided by 2, right, um, is 2, so there is no remainder. So the remainder is 0, right? If we did 4 mod 3, right, 4 divided by 3 would leave a remainder 1. So that's how we can tell that this is an even number. That's just what that does there. So don't worry about it, that if that syntax looks a little scary, but it's really pretty simple. So if it's even number, we want to continue to my label, right? And so that's, that's this iteration out here. And that, that will basically prevent any of the rows from starting off with even numbers, right? Because on this number ladder, the next row should have been one, two, but it doesn't even display. And then down here, it should have been, you know, one, two, well, this, this, this would have been the one, two, three, four, right? Right in here. And so anyway, so that one doesn't even start there. The next one, or next conditional test we're going to do is, is Y is the variable inside of the inner loop here. And if we take its value, mod two, and that equals zero, then we have another even number because we don't want any even numbers to be displayed in our column values here either, right? Then we're just gonna continue on the inner loop and that will basically, that's basically this loop here. So we'll never get to this line down here that prints Y unless we're dealing with an odd number, right? So that's how we're building our, our number ladder with only the odd numbers there, okay? So let's go ahead and just uh, change this up here to, I don't know, like 31 and we'll save that. Come back here, we'll clear our screen, Recom uh, recompile, run it, right, and there's our same eight ducks, only ducks here, no geese, and here's our number ladder all the way up to the number 31. So, 
that's basically how the uh, the continue statement works the unlabeled continue statement and then the labeled continue statement so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this close out of that I'll leave you with some final thoughts here using the continue statement is very uncommon but there may be unique circumstances in which early iteration is required and the continue statement provides a structure way, structured way to do just that. So that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.